West Virginia Democrats. This is amazing. It's the Daily Caller. In a move showing how politically toxic President Barack Obama has become in parts of the country, three prominent West Virginia Democrats announced yesterday that they will not attend the Democrat National Convention in September. Those opting out of appearing at the gathering of Democrats across the country to officially renominate President Kardashian include Senator Joe Manchin, Governor Earl Ray Tomlin, and Representative Nick Rahal. They're not going. When's the last time you ever heard of that? A Democrat governor who values the energy productivity that comes from his state knows that Obama wants to shut it down. Not going to the Democrat National Convention. Folks, uh, they are in panic. I, uh, Mike, grab soundbite 19. Let's, let's start in order here. I, I've, let's get to this because I've, I've been alluding to this the whole program. I really believe that at the Obama campaign inside the White House, they are in a full-fledged panic. And I think they have polling data that's even worse for their guys than what public polling data is available to us. And I think all the policy changes and all the uh, uh, public pronouncements coming from from Obama are indicative of it. Last night on uh, Cavuto, well, yesterday afternoon, it was his afternoon show, 4 o'clock on Fox, he talked to Pat Cadell, a Democrat pollster, and they're talking about Obama and the presidential race, and listen to what Cadell said. They look like they're in some strategic chaos. And you see this last week, you give a major speech on Thursday, 55 minutes on the economy, which was reminiscent to me if we had a campaign theme in 1980 of two futures, this was two pass. And it didn't go over well with even liberal supporters. We saw it in gay marriage where two thirds of the people said he did it for political reasons. We've seen the same thing in bin Laden. This Hispanic thing smacks of a strategy of we can't win the middle. We have to get our base out. And if you're in June and your strategy is we must get our base out, you got problems. And Pat Cadell knows Jimmy Carter lost in a landslide in 1980. Pat Cad- and he ran it. Well, Beckel. No, no. Cadell ran it. It was Beckel ran Mondo. That's right. But Cadell knows. And they really, they, they are abandoning the independence. Now, the independence, by the way, on this immigration thing, I should tell you, you're not going to want to hear it, but there is polling data out. People by two to one approve of Obama's immigration statement. By two to one, people like Obama, the Constitution. They like it. And I think even among independents, it's two to one. But aside from that, Obama and his campaign, well, it's like we had the story earlier. White, straight, old guys, that's who Romney's going for. Obama is going for all of the extremes and trying to put together a coalition of extreme minority groups in this country, and that's his uh, path to victory. They've lost the mainstream, that's what Cadell's point is, and when you have to start going after your base in June. When you don't own your base and you're the president, you're an incumbent president, and your base is abandoning you, or your base is getting chilly and they're not excited, you've got problems. And that's what Cadell was saying. Cavuto said, well, they might look at it and say, this is just a snapshot, that we're uh, we're going through a down funk right now. You know, these funks go, they come and go, and then by the time the summer gets here, we'll be bouncing back. What about that, Pat? As I said when the job numbers came out, which I said to you all along, they start to tick back up, all hell's going to start falling apart here. And I mean, the unemployment is up. rising again. Gotcha. Jobs collapsing on the job market, and that's just spiraling. This has been a month, you know, to quote Elliot, June is the cruelest month. This is very cruel. And we still have next week's decision, or this week, or whenever it comes, on right. health care. Right. And don't forget the Arizona immigration case. That is yet to come. And the smart money is looking at what Obama's doing and thinking he knows what the decisions are. There's a a story. uh, See, I can find it here very quickly. I can paraphrase the headline. It's all about the regime making plans to continue health care after the decision on the premise that they are going, yeah, administration mulls paired health law, AP. Covering all the bases ahead of a momentous Supreme Court ruling, the regime 
plans to move ahead with major parts of the health care law if its most controversial provision doesn't survive. So they're, they could be fainting us out, you know, the, the, the old uh, double cross. The news makes it look like they expect to lose some of these things. The, the, the news makes it look like they think they're going to lose some of these things. Now, that could, as I say, be a head fake. We won't know till we know, and I'm not falling for it, but I'm just telling you, things are out there right now that indicate utter panic inside the uh, regime. And then this next by this David Moranis, he was on Piers Morgan tonight, which nobody saw because it was on CNN, which is why I want to play this soundbite for you. David Moranis is an associate editor at the Washington Post, and he is the author of Barack Obama, The Story. And it's amazing, you know, nobody in the media bothered to vet Obama in 2007 and 2008. And amazingly, what we're learning now is that nobody in the media bothered to fact check Obama's biography. They just accepted it. Now, a friendly biographer, Moranis, admits that Obama's autobiography is full of, um, well, it just did. Uh, doesn't all add up. Well, we'll see. Here's, here's Piers Morgan says it's a fascinating book to read next to the Dreams book because there are at least, I think, someone counted 38 significant parts of Barack Obama's version of events that you take issue with 38. My gentle sir, the Republicans have jumped all over this. As you'd expect, saying, you know, this is evidence. That Obama's a fantasist, a liar, made up half of his story. What is the reality about your findings in totality, sir, in terms of the veracity, the honesty of Barack Obama's story? The mythologies range from early on when, for instance, in high school, in his memoir, he says that he wasn't a starter on his basketball team because he played black and the coach coached white. Of course, I discovered that, in fact, Barack Obama was about the eighth or ninth best player on that team, that he was one of the few players who couldn't dunk the ball, so it had nothing to do with race. Everything in his book is seen through the lens of race, and, and that sometimes distorts things, like the girlfriend that he writes about in his memoir in New York City, he sort of defines her through the lens of race as a white woman who didn't understand the anger of black people. The real girlfriend, who was Genevieve Cook, had a completely different perspective on race. Uh, Moranis says he's lying in his autobiography. This is what Moranis is saying. He's, and this basketball stuff that has been out there for a while. Obama is saying that he had trouble on a team because he played black basketball and the coach coached white basketball. Now, I don't know the difference. I, your humble host, I don't know the difference in black basketball and white basketball. But Obama did say that he played black and a coach coached white. The official program observer, Mr. Bo Snerdley, with a question. What's the question? That's what Morana said, that Barack Obama couldn't dunk the ball. Can't jump. You have to jump. That's correct. You have to jump to be able to dunk, and he couldn't dunk. So one would conclude he couldn't jump. So if you can't jump and dunk, you have to play white basketball. I guess. And Obama said he played black ball. The coach coached white ball. And that's why Obama didn't play much. But Moranis says, no, he's the eighth or ninth best team uh, player on the team. He's not one of the best top five. He's not a starter because he can't play. This is a friendly biographer telling us that Obama lied about it, something as insignificant as basketball in high school. And then he makes up this composite girlfriend and talks about how he had trouble with her because she didn't understand the anger of black people. And the girl in question of reality had no such problems with race. He made it up. I don't know who was on the basketball team. I don't know the makeup. I don't know how many Hawaiians. I don't know how many Samoans. I don't know how many people from 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 um, Kenya. I, I don't know how many how many from uh, from what's south of Hawaii. Uh, 
No, not Indonesia. But there's a there's a resort down there that's five hours south of Hawaii. I'm going to, uh, um, doesn't matter. I don't know the makeup of the team, Snurdly. I don't even know what white ball versus black ball is. Obama said he played black ball. The coach coached white ball. And as such, the coach was a racist. The team was racist. Strategy of the game was racist. And Obama rode the bench. <laughs> Would Obama have worn the Adidas sneakers if they were out there? No way. No way. I don't. I don't. Adidas canceled the uh, the slave sneakers, um, the uh, shackle sneakers. Uh, um, it's on the tip of my tongue. I can't think of this. It's, it's uh, uh, not Bali. Uh, anyway, I don't know the makeup of the team. I don't know. All I know is Obama played black ball, which somebody tell me what that is. There must be such a thing. Okay, Snurdly says there's no such thing as black basketball. What would you know? You don't play. We've got to take a break. Sit tight. Much more straight ahead here on the EIB Network. Don't go away. Rush.